Warren Buffett once said, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And I think the last 24 hours in the stock markets and markets around the world really justify this statement in many ways. We looked at some statistics yesterday and we talked about how every time we hit this 50 exponential moving average on the S&P 500, the market would rebound at least for one day. The next time we see this chart may look very different though. There's a lot to unpack in this video and a lot to cover guys. Stay tuned. Okay, well here begins our market recap for the 20th of July close 2021 and straight away when we look at this heat map together, we can see it was a sea of green. Everything looked pretty good and most things were up. Apple recovered 2.6%, Google, the FANG stocks other than Nvidia and of course the banks were back in control. Now does this immediately mean, oh, everything's over and we're back into the green and everything feels good? I still think there's a lot of warning signs that over the next coming months, we will have a corrective phase in the markets. But for that last 24 hours of trade, we saw some positive action. Now let's quickly talk about what happened in the morning. So the market came in, it looked a little bit reddish, and it had one of those classic false breaks to the downside, especially on the NASDAQ, where it went negative for a little bit, scared people in what I call the first 15 minutes of retail hour, and then recovered strongly after that with a slight amount of selling into the close. So the market overall was very strong. It pulled up and statistically likely events occurred based on that 50 exponential moving average and our analysis yesterday. So it just pays to always break it down and cut out the noise and try to figure out what happened over the history. Can we apply that to the future? And it's not always going to work but it certainly should be able to give you a little bit more information. Remember, it's all about bringing actionable data into your technical analysis and into, of course, your fundamental analysis. Let's just quickly talk about these sections here. So we've got XLI doing so well, industrials, financials came back strong, water stocks came back strong. They've been on a really big tear after their breakout and everything else was up. The only two sectors doing pretty poorly were utilities and consumer staples. And that's because, of course, they're more of a defensive sector during a green day, they're unlikely to be doing that well. Tomorrow will be the test for those because when we have utilities opening up, let's say the market goes weak, will they run through? So we've just had earnings in from Netflix. We've now got Coca-Cola before the open. Join us one hour before the New York Open to check out what we think about that Coca-Cola result. Probably should be relatively good based on the Pepsi result. Then we've got Intel, Snap, and Twitter later on this week. I think this will be the most important day. Thursday after the close, what a cool amount of stuff coming out. Now, I've been mentioning this in every video and I still think I'm not taking it away because I believe it's going to be one important factor and that is that the Russell 2000, which did incredibly well yesterday, is going to probably lead the way if we do see a correction or a crash. Now, Russell 2000 is a good indicator because it's the smaller companies in the US. It's obviously the ones that are more susceptible to economic change and Wall Street tends to buy them when they feel like everything's great in the world and they tend to sell them when they feel like everything's poor in the world. One of the big reasons behind this is the Russell 2000 is filled with smaller banks. So there's a lot of financials in there and we need to understand that. Let's move into the technical analysis straight away and talk about what's going on around the world. We'll go with dollar index to start off here. It continues to strengthen. You'll see here <clears throat> it breaks through the 9280. It continues to move up. We have one day and another day it looks like going bullish. We go to the weekly. You can see the closure was the key. For anyone that's just joining this channel for the first time, it's all about closure is the key and understanding that although you haven't at that point broken past the 9280, what you're doing here is you're saying all the shorters that we're here, all the sellers that we're here, we're, we're coming for you. The momentum is shifting and it's pushing higher. I expect the dollar index to continue its bull run here as they talk about tapering, of course, from the Fed as numbers come out. And just in general, this thing was oversold. Like, look at this massive double bottom that could be playing out here. Dollar index could seriously bull over the next 12 months if this continues to play out and we continue to see bullish action. 94.14 is the first take profit kind of zone. And of course, 93.40, we're going to be watching very closely to see how the dollar index interacts with that previous peak. That's going to be a very, very big zone to look at. Let's go, let's go over to gold now. What's going on in gold? It is all over the place. What a tough kind of trading sessions we've had here. If you go to the daily, 
it looks kind of negative with that daily close that's come through. We're still at the heavy support zone around that 1808. If we go down to something like the two hour, because this is all because of dollar strength, by the way, if the dollar is strong, what it's doing is it's putting pressure on gold. So even though gold looks strong and it's like, you know, should be going up during its seasonal time of the year, if you've got the dollar index, the US dollar going so bullish, it's hard for gold to even hold itself there. So that's why it's all over the place and, and hovering around. Um, I don't know about gold right now. I was very bullish over here, as you guys would know. I did definitely have an 1843 longer term target on it. Um, I had some you know areas through here that I was scaling in and out of. But unfortunately, at this stage, it's become now so choppy that even with yesterday's action and what's happening going on, the dollar index is ultimately controlling gold. So we'll keep watching it. We'll keep looking for breakouts. But at this point, it's kind of stagnant in the middle. And I hope it does go to the bull side over the next coming days. Let's move over to US oil. So as we suspected, oil became a pretty big travesty in terms of investment. It's now back on a very important previous resistance support line. Now, does this mean, oh, I'm going to go buy it? I'm going to buy the dip. We're buying the dip. No, <laughs> you need to see more. You don't just buy a, a literal falling knife here in terms of how far down oil has gone. We know that OPEC, which is always the cartel that kind of gets involved in the oil market, they came to an agreement. It's pushed down. We kind of saw this. I think we've been very good at spotting oil moves. We've got a long leg doji on the daily here. So we're looking for a closure above, decision made more bullish, or a closure below, decision made more bearish. I think it's at a critical point. And I, if I was an oil trader, I would be looking at the smaller time frames and looking for kind of like hints and teasers that it is moving in one direction or the other. Is it gonna go bullish? Is it gonna be bearish? too close to tell after that falling knife. There's just structural formation coming through now. Let's go over to Tesla. So Tesla had a decent session on it, did 2.21%. Again, came all the way down here to 621, found the support right on the lows. Wow, that would have been scary if it didn't do that. It's come back through, hit this 646. As we discussed on the daily yesterday, when we talked about it, this wasn't a bearish sign for us. Remember, if we clean past our current trend line, which is a series of troughs here and higher troughs, effectively, we gapped underneath and fully bulled back into it. That means that I don't treat that like a closure below. It's kind of like over here on the left-hand side. We had a gap, bullish up. We had a gap, bullish up. And then we finally see the red signal here. And if you go back and watch the videos, this was the one that I was like, wow, the sellers are coming in hard. So when that happened, of course, it sent disaster shockwaves through the Tesla shares. This is a great sign. You know, we get past 690 now for Tesla. It's going to be a phenomenal kind of pickup, I believe, of participation. And it's definitely quite possible. We've got nice bullish kind of candles coming through here. 690 is the target. As we know, daily close above 690, boom. That should light the dynamite under this thing. Also, other things that had dynamite lighting underneath them was definitely AMC. We did this in the live stream yesterday. We talked about this little double bottom that was down here and boy, oh boy, did it come through with the goods. We had the support, the support found again, long leg doji, made a decision, got through the 3880, which creates a double bottom and then actually went the full distance of the double bottom within the same session. That's a little disappointing to me because I was sleeping uh, during this time and uh, I didn't see it, but I do specifically like that break of the 38. Uh, $39 range. That was a beautiful closure. For anyone that got it yesterday, congratulations. Uh, will this lead to further bullish gains? Well, traditionally, I guess when AMC has done well, it's uh, usually led to a huge amount of chatter on the internet. So I think you've got a social arb, this type of thing. It's all about understanding how many apes are with you, how many apes are you know going crazy and have you hit a critical point. So it's at a point of resistance as far as I'm concerned. Support, 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 support becomes resistance. But if it does breach through this zone, create structure, you've got 48, 40, and then of course you've got 52. And on the downside, I could see it kind of pull back to this area and hopefully find buying pressure around 3880. Things have changed certainly here in AMC over the last 24 hours. Amazing stuff there. Let's move over to IWM. This is the market I'm going to be watching now along with some bank setups that are going to tell us, I believe, whether we're in a corrective phase or not. So IWM, big rally, great. 
I'm not particularly trading IWM, but congratulations if you were in it yesterday. 3.1% on an index is no small feat. That's amazing stuff. And we kind of had like a little bit of indecision candle, almost like a long leg doji down here on the previous supports. We've now made the decision to go up and this bodes, I think, well for the markets for the short term. Let's hope that is actually what's happening here. So IWM, if it breaks underneath the 208, to me, that's going to be a signal that the bears are fully in control of the market. That is one of the things that I'll be looking for. And um, I'm sure many people are sending alerts for that area. And then of course, they're going to make their own decisions. It's, it's a pretty key zone. QQQ, NASDAQ, what's going on there came off the 20 moving average. As we said, gap below full bull move does not mean it's closed below. We've now filled the gap. So we've filled where the gap was, which is the first step. Now the question is whether the bulls are willing to maintain this level. So if we think about it just in general terms of when you usually see crashes, you usually get a peak, you usually get a trough, and then it rallies, and then it makes a lower peak, and it makes a lower trough. Now if all of this does occur and we get this lower trough back at 352, the IWM is also going to be closing below that giant channel range. And that's going to again signal to us that the bears are back in control. We've got things like TLT as well, which of course didn't perform great during a bull day yesterday, but this is moving up heavily. We've got the 155 kind of target on that at the moment. This is the 20 year bonds, another signal um, that the market may not be that healthy. And then we've got the US 30 off the trend line. This is the Dow, one, two, three, four buys off this area. Did a very good job getting back up there. That's pretty important stuff. What about the US 500 though? Well, this is the chart that we were really banking on yesterday. We were banking on this concept of every time it's hit the 50 for the first time and gone bearish and closed around there, it has bulled the next day. If you notice on this screen, what have we just done? We have filled the gap. So it is time now. Yesterday was pretty statistically likely, like we discussed. Today is going to be much more difficult. So this is going to be the area where we've got peak, trough, and then will we create a lower peak and come back down and then let the bears fully in? This is where the bears get full control of the market, by the way. This is the point that I believe the bears are really taking control of it. Or will we just continue to rally? Bit of a pullback, movement up, create the lightning bolt towards the bull side. And then of course, go towards our community trend line. That we don't know yet. Congratulations to people taking the fill. I think that was an amazing trade. Hyper stocks were going off. Pandemic style stocks were going off due to the Delta variant. And again, this is more of an excuse than anything else I believe in the markets. Let's check out JP Morgan, what's going on there. So we've got here a head and shoulders pattern. There's no doubt in my mind, this is the type, this is the real deal here. This is a weekly style um, pattern. Now it's hard to short markets. We have a left shoulder, we have a head and we have a right shoulder. We're looking for a closure underneath this 149 kind of area on at least a significant time frame because it's more of a weekly style head and shoulders. We're probably looking for something like that or maybe even something like a nice daily close. Let's go with a daily close underneath 146. Support, 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 and the full, the full buy zone. Daily close will be the key here. If that happens, we've got a big kind of you know sell off. I think at least it goes down to 139 for JP Morgan. And then if it keeps going, well, you know, that, that's the big thing. Don't expect bearish head and shoulders patterns or bearish patterns in general to go through with the full goods. They usually don't move as much as you expect. Let's move over to Bitcoin. It still looks incredibly sick. We're at the critical point here. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin, I've been bearish on it since we got that closure through Ser series of lower kind of highs, lower peaks going through. Unfortunately, you just can't touch it with a 10 foot barge pole, in my opinion. Um, you guys can do whatever you want with it. Uh, I don't like it. I wish it was better, but it is not. And if it gets underneath this support, expect some volatile times, potentially big dumps across the Bitcoin. Uh, my big problem with this is going to be regulation. And I look at it from the perspective of if they regulate the stable coins in America, what's going to happen next? And I think there's going to be a great flood into Bitcoin long term. I think it's going to be incredibly positive for it. And a lot of people won't be looking at it that way. But initially, it will be negative, and especially when they start to uncover some of the, uh, no doubt, nefarious activities that are probably around there. Who knows? Hey, who knows? Speculation only. Uh, if that does occur, it could be negative for it in the short term. So be careful in Bitcoin. This is still the master of all the cryptos, and if it's falling, the rest will plummet with it. 
we have a look at the amount of shorts that are coming through from the whales not even the whales are pushing this one let's just refresh that the whales don't have that many shorts in their positions as far as the bit phoenix data goes so it's just a general sentiment kind of fud i think people are a little bit scared about the maybe regulation and that that could be causing it good luck everyone today i hope you guys do really really well in the markets and remember to join us one hour before the new york open uh, to come and check out our thoughts on the markets and it's going to be you know fantastic to go through the next couple of months because i think there's going to be a lot of volatility and hopefully a little bit of a correction for the people that want it bye for now stay tuned